So in this video here, we're going to see how we can build a full end-to-end -end computer vision system. We're going to have a video, we're going to chunk it up into individual images, then we will see how we can label the images, train an autolytic YOLO model, run the inference with it to be able to use it in our own applications and projects. So this is going to be a logistics data set where we basically just have a conveyor build where we have different types of packages, backs and so on running on that we want to detect. First of all here, let's just jump straight into my code editor. We're going to just take a look at the video that we're going to process. So we're just interested in detecting all these boxes running on the conveyor belt. Then we can set up a tracking system, counting how many boxes are going out here. So this is a pretty cool computer vision use case. This is going to be the final output results where we have different boxes. We're detecting some bags in the background. And then we can track our objects and do our line counting. So first of all here, we're basically just going to take this script. Everything is, will be available under the description, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'm basically just going to take this path to our video. It's going to extract every uh, 10 frames every second. You can play around with the parameter. It's basically just a hard-coded value. So frames per second, you can specify it here. Two, three, four, five. Let's just go with two for our image example, I already have a data set which is fully labeled so we can save some time. But all we have to do is pretty much just go in here, Python, we have opened up a terminal to Python with two frames. It's going to process all of them through, it will create this data set folder, extracted 44 frames to our data. So now we have converted our video into images, now we just need to label them. So let's go back here again to my browser, there's a image M tool here that I'm going to use. There's a bunch of different tools. We have tutorials covering how you can do auto labeling, how you can use different types of labeling tools and all that. I'm just going to show you the step and the process now, but you can take a look at all that we have, have in here. There's C CVAD, Label Me, Label M, Label Studio, tons of different tools out there. We also have the auto annotation tool with Autolytics that you can take a look at. So just inside guides. And then we have our data collection and annotation strategies for computer vision, for videos covering everything. So let's jump back here to the label M, it's pretty easy to get up and running depending on what operating system you're on. So if you're on Windows, you can build from source. Right now I'm on Mac OS, there's also Linux installations. So you can brew install Qt and lib uh, XML too, and, or you can also do it with pip. Then we just need to make it and we can run this Python script. So I'm going to open up a terminal. I already have these ones installed, but again, we can just do it with pip. There we go. We make our Qt5 pi free. There we go. And now I just need to, we need to cd into our uh, label im. Make sure that you clone the repository. So just git clone, copy paste the link from up here. There we go, we grab this one and we can just clone it into it. But I'm already inside that directory. So it will just create a new one. There we go. We make it, we have everything. We can just run this Python script and it should start up our GUI where we can do our basic annotations. So then we have our data folder. All we have to do is just open it. Now we have loaded in all our images as we can see. To be able to create a bounding box, I just go over to the left, we get our crosshair and now we can draw our bounding box around it. There we go. Let's call this a box. And we will have to do this for all the boxes that we have. So go in and use the auto annotation tool that we have with Autolytics. We can use the YOLO E, YOLO world model and so on, where we just prompt it that we want to detect boxes. Then it's easier to delete labels or just annotate a few if it has missed some. There we go. We can go through all of them. This is the first class. If we want to create a second class, we can also take this back in the background. And we just call it back. There we go. Now we have two classes in our data set. So when we are saving it, we can either go into YOLO or create ML, Pascal VOC, but it can export into the YOLO format already, which is basically just the text format that you can find on the Autolytics documentation, but also just the standard format that we are using. If we now go back here again, we can see we have our frame zero and we also have our TXT file where we have our normalized image coordinates and then we also have our ID for our classes. So inside here, it was actually like using the Coco classes as default. So make sure to delete those as well. But already it takes a long time to go in and do it. I already have the full data set here with our images and labels and we have our test and training script. So next thing here that we have to do 
is going to grab an example. So we need to have a data YAML file. When we have created our own data set, let's go ahead and grab this Coco8 example. And we have our Coco YAML file format here. So let's just copy this one. And we just need to put it into our logistics. I'm going to create a new file. Let's just call it data.yml. There we go. We copy paste this one here. And now we're just going to have two classes. The first one will be our box. And then we had our back here as the second one. Just make sure we have these. We have zero and we have one. So this is pretty much just the labels that we have after we have cleaned out the Coco ones. So now we need to specify where we have our training set and where we have our validation set. So our images is going to be our test, but we're just going to use that as our validation. There we go. And we can also just specify it for our test set. It's optional, but our validation set is just going to be our test set. Usually you have to free splits as we go over in the other videos. And I'm going to grab this path as well. And we don't need these. Logistics, we will put that up here in the base directory, root directory, instead of Coco8. And we're going to also complete this. The download file, we will not have that. This will just also download. Let's delete this other part and we basically just have our data YAML file. So what we can do now is that we can go inside Autolytics again. We go inside our task. We have our train. We can just use the CLI. So let's grab this one and let's just train for 10 epochs. We're going to use a pre-trained model. We drop it down here. Make sure you have pip installed Autolytics first. I'm just going to run it for 10 epochs here locally. You can run this in a Google Colab notebook with GPU resources, free GPU resources and everything as well. So data, YAML file. Let me just move it outside because we have already specified the base directory. So we have our data.yaml file. We train. We should be inside the correct location now. Let's just hit enter and see what happens. We're downloading the model first of all. It sets up the trainer. Now it should handle the data set. Just run some checks on if we have it in the correct format. And if someone was quicker than me, we can see that I still had the logistics here for our labels. And I'm also having the labels up here. It should be the images. So if some of you guys was quicker than me, you would probably have seen that. There we go. We have scanned our images. We're now able to pull in our images as well. There we go. And it has started the training for 10 epochs. So it's going to take some time here. I'm just on my MacBook CPU. So let's go grab a coffee. Let's get back. And then after that, we can use the model, see how we can run inference on a video. And that's how we can use the full end-to-end, -end, set up a full end-to-end -end computer vision project with Ultralytics. So it's pretty fast here when we don't have so many images. We can see the bounding boxes or precision recall for our boxes are pretty much going up. We have our mean error positions. They're also going up. It will, the model will definitely not converge before, like we're probably trained for 50 epochs. I usually go with around 50 to 100 epochs, depending on how much data I have. We're already at epoch six here. And we only had our 44 frames. So when you run this, you definitely need probably like a few hundred images to get going. Then you'll have a data flywheel where you add more and more images. It's the exact same process. It just takes a bit longer, but definitely check out the auto annotation tool that we have as well. We have videos covering everything on the channel. So it should be pretty much done here in just a second. We have our train three, we have our weights. So this is the weights that we can use directly. We have our last PT, we will have our I'll put visualizations here in just a, a second. So we have a confusion matrix. There we go. We're not really getting two good detections. Let's take a look at our results. Our model is definitely not converged. We get some detections not converged yet for sure. Let's take a look at our validation labels or our predictions. So we're not really getting any detections here yet. Let's just try to train for a bit longer. I'll try to just run it for maybe like 100 epochs. I'll go grab a coffee then, and then we can take a look at the results. So we just have to go back and change it. 100 epochs, and that's it. Our model is now done training 400 epochs, and we have significantly better results. Now our model is pretty much 
fully converged here, as you can see, mean error precision of almost one or pretty close to one, and also our 0.50 to 0.95 MAP is also in the higher end. If you're going to take a look at our confusion matrix now, it's pretty much perfect. We missed six detections on across our whole data set. We have our predictions for our validations, and we have all the boxes detected now with very high confidence score. So what we can do now is to go inside Autolytics. We have our different modes. We can run track mode. Have we just covering everything again? There we go. Let's just go in and grab this one, yellow track. We can run it down here. What we have to do now is go in and specify our model. So the model that we're going to use is the one that we have just trained, best.pt. I'm gonna copy the relative path inside our runs directory, our source. We will go up and find that one. So that will be our raw video that we cropped up. There we go, we should be good to go. We're going to run optic tracking now. We're just running it. I forgot something. So we can also set save equal to true. And we can also just set show equal to true. So now it's both gonna show us the results here while it's running, but it will also output it into a video file. Now we have built a full computer vision system end to end. We started with a video. We chunked it up now we label a data set we structure it in the correct format i'll show you how we can build a data yaml file we train the model we're running inference now we're tracking then we can go in and use our counting system to go in and count how many boxes are going through here and you have a full computer vision project up and running 10 milliseconds inference here it's crazy fast i definitely encourage you guys to go in and build out this counting system we have videos notebook tutorials everything covering it as, as well but this is how fast it is to build a full computer vision system end to end. It's much more about the business logic, using the models afterwards to actually go out there, provide business value, apply the logic to solve your specific problems. Hope you learned on this video here, guys. Definitely go ahead and check it out. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.